And now it's my true honor to welcome Cardinal Giuseppe Versaldi from the Congregation of Catholic Education of the Holy See. Cardinal Versaldi began as the prefect of the congregation on March 31st of 2015. And when he was invited by Sister John Mary and our Dr. Bernford to please come and visit us here in the United States, he took up that invitation without any hesitation. And on Easter Sunday, traveled all the way from Rome to be with us today. Cardinal Versaldi was made a cardinal in 2012. I believe it was at the Synod for the Evangelization that Pope Benedict said, I'm going to name some new cardinals. And one of them was Cardinal Versaldi, who had served as the Bishop of Alessandria in Italy. He oversees now about 1,358 colleges and universities, about 139,000 schools, with about 58 million young people. He knows every one of them by name. <laughs> Archbishop Versali, we're so honored to have you with us this, uh, for these days. He celebrated Mass for us this morning, and welcome for being a part of our 2018 NCEA convention. Let's welcome Cardinal Rousseau. Thank you for your generous words and I am very happy to stay here. And uh, on behalf of the uh, Holy Father, Pope Francis, I am happy to convey his greetings and blessing to you, to all of you. His Holiness encourages you to persevere in your important work for the education of the young people. He wishes the best of success for this convention and invites you all to accompany with your prayers the preparation for the up upcoming synod about the young people. And also, I am very grateful to the National Catholic Educational Association for ha having invited me to such an important event where we can reflect on the ministry of the Catholic teachers in the schools. The organizing association, in fact, has the biggest number of the Catholic teachers anywhere, serving millions of students, not only in the United States. I was especially pleased by the team chosen for this convention, as it responds to Pope Francis' invitation for the pastoral and missionary conversion of a whole church. As he said in the Evangelic Gaudium, I dream a missionary option that is a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything so that the church customs, ways of doing things, times and schedules, language and structures can be suitable channels for the evangelization of today's world rather for our self-preservation. Recently, the Pope wanted to repeat this invitation with the Apostolic Constitution Veritatis Gaudium, which is addressed to the ecclesiastical universities and faculties. They, with their educational role, are to place themselves at the service of the mission of today's church. In his document, Pope Francis writes, this is a good occasion to promote with thoughtful and prophetic determination the renewal of ecclesiastical studies at every level as part of a new phase of the Church's mission marked by the witness to the joy born of encountering Jesus and proclaiming his gospel that I set before the whole people of God as a program in the Evangelii Gaudium. The Pope desires that we draw on the richness of the Church legacy 
when educating our young people so as to impart to ecclesiastical studies that wise and courageous renewal demanded by the missionary transformation of the Church that goes forth. What the Pope affirms in specific way for ecclesiastical universities and faculties can also be applied to all levels of the Catholic schools as, as places of evangelization in the dialogue between faith and reason. Catholic schools need to be refocused, refocused on the mission, for the mission of evangelization in the third millennium. This then requires two levels of commitment from those involved in education. Firstly, as Pope Francis stressed it in Evangelium Gaudium and also in Veritatis Gaudium, we must strengthen the Catholic identity of our institutions, linking them more profoundly with the heart of the Gospel. This priority applies to every believer who wants to be at the service of the Church's mission, to remain a faithful disciple of one master from whom comes the word of salvation. In fact, Pope Francis says, first, the most urgent and enduring criterion is that of contemplation and the presentation of a spiritual, intellectual, and existential introduction of the heart of the kerygma, namely the ever fresh and attractive good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which continues to take flesh in the life of the Church and of humanity. Was working in the Catholic schools need to ensure that they remain in close communion with the heart of the gospel. In this way, they will grasp its liberating power, which cannot be lessened by what is of secondary importance as regards the heart of the gospel's message. Pope Francis also warned us about the need to return to the heart of the gospel in Evangelii Gaudium, when he affirmed that in today's world of instant communication and occasionally biased media coverage, the message we preach runs a greater risk of being distorted or reduced to some of its secondary aspects. Therefore, pastoral ministry in a missionary style is not obsessed with the disjointed transmission of a multitude of doctrines to be insistently imposed. When we adopt a pastoral goal and a missionary style which would actually reach everyone without exception or exclusion, the message has to concentrate on the essentials, on what is most beautiful, most grand, most appealing, at the same time most necessary. And this fundamental core is the beauty of the saving love of God made manifest in Jesus Christ who died and rose from the dead. The Pope invites all those working in the Catholic schools to verify carefully whether they are refocused on the mission when fulfilling their responsibility on evangelizing today. The light of faith which illuminates the reason in its search for the truth has to shine again in all its beauty and attractiveness, as when Jesus spoke to the people as someone who, uh, with authority and who brought the good news that the Father sent his son not to condemn sinful humanity, but to save it. This should be a project of love delivered honestly to help our young people return to a joyful encounter with Christ, who liberate us from sin, sorrow, inner emptiness, and loneliness, because with Christ, joy is constantly born anew. And the second commitment derives from the church, re, churches re, focusing on its mission in education, to open a constructive and courageous dialogue with the world in which we live today, as it is, without fear of being contaminated by reality, even when it seems opposed to the gospel. This commitment is possible only when based on the duty I mentioned before, or returning the, to the essence of the gospel message. In fact, 
The more the identity of the faith is important to us, more efficient will be our dialogue with the modern world in all its complexity. We have to escape the temptation of defensive entrenchment, as if we feel threatened and must raise walls to defend what complies with our religion. Instead, we have to see in education a chance for open-minded and courageous dialogue with everyone, knowing that faith and reason are not antagonists, but are like two wings on which the human spirit rises to the contemplation of truth. Pope Francis, in the previously cited Veritatis Gaudium, invites us to a wide-ranging dialogue that is to say, dialogue not as a mere tactical approach, but as an intrinsic requirement for experiencing in community the joy of the truth and appreciating more fully its meaning and practical implications. The Pope encourages us to create in our school an authentic culture of an encounter a culture of encounter between all the authentic and vital cultures, thanks to a reciprocal exchange of gifts of each in that luminous space opened up by God's love for all creatures. This culture of a dialogue implies a capacity for listening to others so as to understand sincerely their real motivation. However, it also implies a capacity for dialogue for proposing a pathway that is enlightening and reasonable, that derives from our faith and that is able to give proof of itself to people. We have to use the pedagogy that Jesus himself used. When staying in the midst of the people, he knew how to respond to their needs, and at the same time, he provoked him hunger for bread that is not only satisfied with material hunger, but also nurtures the whole human spirit. Jesus' teaching has credibility because of his infin infinite love for all, especially for the poor and the needy, a love that draw him to give his life for the salvation of all. Our educational communities, cooperating closely with the students' families, must always express the maternal face of the Church, so as to be close to today's young people in a way that expresses the love of God for each of them. In fact, Pope Francis writes in the Evangelii Gaudium, the Church will have to initiate everyone, priest, religious, and laity, into this art of accompaniment, which teaches us to remove our sandals before the sacred ground of, other, of the other. And the Pope continues, Today, more than ever, we need men and women who, on the basis of the experience of accompanying others, are familiar with a process which calls for prudence, understanding, patience, docility of the spirit, so that they can protect the sheep from wolves who would scatter the flock. Hence, the need for a pedagogy which will introduce people step by step to the full appropriation of the mystery, reaching a level of maturity where individuals can make truly free and responsible decision calls for much time and patience. Catholic schools renewed in accordance with the authoritative directives of the Pope Francis can certainly place themselves at the crossroads of the most important challenges of our time. Once again, I am very happy to see that your association, under its leadership and in cooperation with your pastors, is well aware of this mission. For this reason, it is giving you a chance during this convention to reflect and to take decisions that will doubtless be of great help to you in the future. This is also an auspicious occasion since it looks for forward for the scene of the bishop, which will discuss issues affecting young people who, for the most part, are in education in schools. The witness of the Catholic Church educational community, therefore, is a very important nexus within the Church's overall witness of proclaiming and witnessing of the gospel of Jesus. 
every effort to improve the formation of all those involved in our Catholic schools is a grace that purifies and renews the whole Church. Work, working with the families who are the first educators of their children and along with the parochial communities and other church institutions, our Catholic schools can carry out their mission for a holistic formation of our young people, not only, not only in the service to the church, but also to the whole of society. I'm sure, and these are my wishes and prayers, that these days of study and dialogue happily organized by this uh, association will allow you to move forward in the new perspective for mission indicated by the Holy Father. May God assist you with this spirit of light and truth, and may the Virgin Mary, seat of the wisdom, intercede for a successful outcome of this convention. Thank you, and best. I would like to call Dr. Bernford and Archbishop Schnur to the stage. His Eminence Cardinal Versaldi would like to offer him them as a token of appreciation, a special Vatican edition of the Apostolic Constitution, Veritatis Gaudium, the beauty of truth, and the last document of the Congregation for Catholic Education, Educating to Fraternal Humanism, and a medal of the Congregation for Catholic Education.